Friday, we told you about how Mexico's midterm elections reflect public opinion on Mexico's president and his party. Here with election results and analysis is my guest, David Shirk, political science professor at the University of San Diego. And David, welcome back. Now, uh, these election results, uh, the, the final official results won't be in until Friday. So were there any big upsets at this point or surprises in these midterm elections? Well, I think we'll have final, election, uh, final results by Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, but um, uh, there were a couple of surprises. Um, we saw an independent gubernatorial candidate win uh, in uh, Nuevo León. Uh, that's unprecedented in Mexican history. We also saw uh, the PRI, the, uh, the ruling party, the president's party, uh, Enrique Peña Nieto's party, perform uh, much worse than many people had anticipated uh, and also saw small parties throughout the country uh, sprouting up and doing uh, very well. Uh, sort so of independent parties. There. Independent Not, parties. Yeah, let's talk about that the, with the president, Enrique Peña Nieto. His PRI party held on to a slight margin in the lower house of Congress, right? That's or right. In lower Congress. Why do you think that is? Uh, well, first of all, um, any president's party loses seats in a midterm election in most presidential systems. So it wasn't that um, unexpected. Uh, but the president's been strongly criticized in the last uh, few years, and especially the last uh, couple of months, uh, partly because of the security situation, partly because of perceptions of his administration as uh, engaging in corrupt activities. Um, his, his own wife accepted a, uh, a gift, a, a huge white mansion that they called the White House, from a, uh, a contractor who later won a contract from this administration. So there, there are a number of people who I think feel uh, disenchanted by the Peña Nieto government, and that came out, I think, in the polls. Yeah, he had a lot of promises, right, to reduce violence and corruption, and perhaps there, people aren't seeing it that way. Yeah, he had promised that in his first year, violence in Mexico would drop by 50%. Violence has come down somewhat, uh, but it hasn't come down nearly as much or as quickly as we would have liked. Let's talk about this independent, these independents that seem to be rising up here. What do you think is fueling that? Well, I think when people are disenchanted with the political class as a whole, they look for new and different alternatives. And so voting for independents or voting for parties that never existed before, like the Humanist Party uh, or the new leftist party of Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, known as Morena, uh, those those seem to be new and better options uh, than the parties that have always been there, the, the old uh, Institutional Revolutionary Party, the National Action Party, and the Party of the Democratic uh, Revolution. All of those parties are decades old and now represent a political class that uh, many people feel has is totally disengaged from the average voter. Well, one example of this is a, a, a man named El Bronco, as he goes by the name of mm -hmm. El Bronco. Who is he? What can you tell us about his? And what do you think uh, his win is doing? Is it shaking up uh, the elections here? Well, Jaime Rodriguez's victory in um, in Nuevo León, I think, uh, really speaks to the spirit of, of disenchantment that uh, is common among many voters. And it speaks specifically to the case of Nuevo León, where the outgoing governor had a number of um, corrupt dealings and uh, question marks around his um, his administration. He had tried to impose one of his hand-picked uh, uh, cronies to be his successor in that state. And I think voters in uh, the north of Mexico have never been timid about expressing their uh, opinions. Uh, they came out in force and, and elected someone who would be a truly independent voice. Oh, and just to be clear, his nickname is El Bronco. So no. I was yes, going no, by his nickname. Not as, so not his given <laughs> right, not his no. given name. Um, do you think the surge in independent candidates will continue into the 2018 elections? You know, I think that the Nuevo León race definitely um, in will will fuel ambition among independent candidates. But the real question is going to be, how easy is it to govern in any state without uh, a party behind you in the legislature? Uh, I think that we're going to probably see some uh, tough uh, issues ahead for this particular governor because if he wants to get legislation passed, it's going to be very difficult without some kind of uh, uh, party support in the legislature. So I think uh, possibly we may see more of that um, in uh, in the future, but we have to wait and see. Uh, these election results, even though they're preliminary, uh, what do you think as far as what do they mean for uh, U.S. and Mexico relations? Well, I think that there are a number of uh, ways that we have been working closely closely with Mexico. It's our biggest trade partner, uh, aside from Canada, um, at least in terms of the uh, U.S. exports abroad. And um, 
We've also got a significant interest in the energy situation in Mexico. They are privatizing energy, and that could mean uh, great benefits not only for Mexico, but also the United States in terms of self-sufficiency for North America. So there uh, are a number of ways that um, this election may uh, shake things up a little bit in terms of that binational agenda. Uh, to the extent that it's hard for Enrique Peña Nieto to forge ahead with new uh, or continued reforms. Um, it may mean a slowing down of some of the development that, that he had promised in his administration. Um, the, the thing that I think is of greatest concern or has been of greatest concern in the U.S.-Mexico relationship in recent years is this, this question of violence and security. Uh, I do think that we're going to continue to see the overall levels of violence continue to drop in Mexico, but no doubt there will be occasional outbreaks of violence uh, such as some of the ones we saw leading up to this election. All right, political science professor uh, David Shirk, thanks so much for the update. Thanks for having me, Peggy.